I would like to introduce you to um, Monica Jones in the health data research at UK. But I think she can um, tell us what she wants to pre present to us as also. Is she on online or? Yes, Monica, you're online. Hello, can you hear me? Go yes. ahead. <laughs> that, that's great. Thanks very much indeed. And it's it, it's lovely to be here and I'm, I'm delighted to have been invited to, to do this presentation uh, today. Um, so as you can see from uh, my initial slide, um, I'm the Chief Data Officer at the University of Leeds uh, in the UK. Um, and I'm also an Associate Director uh, and the National Strategic Lead for Data Standards for Health Data Research UK. So it's really within that sort of context that my presentation's uh, going to be uh, today. But really, um, it's it's about what we've done over the last sort of few years, utilising the power of SNOMED CT to evidence the impact of the pandemic on, on cancer patients. Um, and for those of you who know me, you know I've been involved with, with SNOMED for uh, at least, ooh, I don't know, 12 odd years. Um, and it's a, a national quest. A, 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 quest of mine uh, to, to improve the, the the use, the uptake, the implementation of, of SNOMED and, and realize those benefits. So next slide, please. So um, HDI UK, what, what is that as an organization? So we are the National Institute for Health Data Science in the UK. So we are funded from a variety of sources directly from central government, uh, but also from a number of our, our research councils, not least the Medical Research Council, um, and we run on a, a five-year sort of funding um, quinquen quinquennial review, um, and we went through our sort of process last year, so we're just one year into to the next year. And our mission, you know, as you can see here, is to unite the UK's uh, health data to enable discoveries that improve people's lives. And we've got a very ambitious sort of vision, you know, uh, for large-scale data and advanced analytics to benefit every patient interaction, clinical trial, and biomedical discovery, and to enhance public health. So you can't do that without actually being able to standardize data, without being able to record it in a consistent way. And obviously, one of the, the main ways to do that is to use clinical terminologies such as SNOMED CT. Next slide, please. So what are we about? Um, we really want to boost uh, health uh, and improve UK science. Um, but also to provide leadership to fix some of the difficult technical problems. So those of us who have worked in this space um, know that actually there are many challenges, both technically but also culturally, um, and, 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 and that's the area that we're sort of operating in, and also to accelerate and streamline uh, health data science a UK-wide organisation, so that covers uh, England, Scotland, Wales, and and Northern Ireland. Um, but also, we have we operate uh, in internationally, and um, HDR uh, Global uh, is essentially one of our ambitions for for this next uh, five years. Um, so that's that's really sort of you know where we're we're we're, we're aiming to have our sort of impact um, um, over the coming years. Next slide, please. So what problem are we trying to solve? Now, there are many component parts of this, but you can see on the left-hand side there that traditionally we've had a one-to-one -one trusted relationships between data custodians and, and researchers. And, and, and with that becomes, comes a level of, 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 of understanding, a level of agreement, a, an area, a level of collaboration. Um, and so you know who you're operating with, you know where the data are, you know what, who's doing what to it. But actually, as our sort of sector matures, we want to get to that many-to-many -many sort of trustworthy um, uh, ecosystem. And as part of that, we need to actually have, you know, information governance policies, standards, interoperability, um, and technology in order to be able to get to have, afford ourselves that same level of, of trust associated with it for those many-to-many -many relationships. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so how do we do that? Um, well, essentially, we've sort of set out three three pillars around this. One is to accelerate trustworthy data use um, by improving sort of national research data strategy uh, and assembling infrastructure. Um, and 
colleagues in particular, Professor Cathy Sudlow from Edinburgh, who's our chief scientist and, and deputy director of the Institute, ha has recently uh, been um, uh, developing the, the, the national um, research uh, health science data strategy. Um, and that will be available um, pretty soon in order to be able to, to, to refer to. Empowering researchers. So it's about that, um, you know, valuing sort of people with diverse perspectives and skills committed to open uh, and team sort of science to advance those scientific discoveries. And finally, to promote partnerships by building and maintaining critical partnerships. And we formed um, what we refer to as the HDI UK Alliance, which are essentially you know, all sorts of uh, data providers, whether that's NHS, uh, hospitals, trusts, um, whether that's uh, sort of arm's length bodies, whether it's a variety of uh, of partners, in, including industry. Um, next slide. Um, and we do that sort of through uh, through our national data strategy, as I, as, as I described, using nationally collated population-wide data, and I'll come on to some of those sort of uses, using regional data, and, and now through NHS England, uh, there's the secure data environment uh, network. So that is essentially all the regions across uh, England are essentially being funded through that, that national uh, program in order to essentially have at a regional level um, the opportunity to be able to, to to link, to share, to standardize data for the improvement um, of, of 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 healthcare outcomes, and including personal monitoring, environmental data, um, and research generated data. And there are a number of exciting opportunities that we're working on at the moment, particularly around wearables data, um, working with UKRI and. Um, and the ESRC uh, in terms of, of, of what we would propose to do around there. So uh, watch this space. I can't quite tell you about it yet, but uh, that, that's coming through. Next slide. <clears throat> and then I talked about empowering researchers. So one of the mechanisms that we've got for this, this, this next sort of five year period is to have five uh, driver programs. And that's sort of building on a lot of work that we did throughout the pandemic, um, but also recognizing that we need exemplars that actually shows the work that we're doing through our sort of infrastructure and, um, and, and technological sort of investment and development. How that plays out in in the real world, and you can see see those five uh, driver programs um, on on the slide here. So, what they have within them are a number of of projects, um, whether that's sort of funding PhD students, postdoctoral research, and um, sort of clinical collaborative uh, sort of projects to tackle some of the the, the big issues, you know, a, a particularly a sort of a big data for complex diseases and um, medicines for acute and chronic care are two that I'm very proactively sort of in, involved in, but, but the other three are, are, are also moving at, at the same pace. Next slide. And this is a slide with a lot of logos on it uh, and they keep getting added Fortuitously, I didn't actually have to pull together this one. Somebody in HDR Central did that. But it's about promoting partnerships. And we talk about, you know, the sort of the cultural and the people aspect um, of sort of data sharing and, and, and the use of, 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 of safe and, and effective um, healthcare um, data. Um, and that is down to the organizations, it's down to the people, it's around to the culture, it's around that buy-in and that commitment that actually this is for the common good and that we'll sort of set aside our, our our own sort of personal and 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 um and organizational boundaries in order to be part of the of the greater good. Um and there I I don't know what the last count is of the of the number of, of members of, of the alliance, but um, it's it grows and, and 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 grows, and that's a great testament to you know the the, the ethos of of what we're actually trying to do. Next slide, please. So um, I talked about some of the sort of the projects that, that that we've done. This is one that has recently been published, and this is a the first of of its type really around a whole UK wide population study, um, revealing the impact of COVID nineteen and uh and in the area of under vaccination. Uh, it was published in The Lancet recently. It's called the Coalesce Study. Um, um, you will get a copy of the slides and, and the references and the links are, are there. 
but it was a real demonstrator around the and a, a significant milestone in our mission to unite the UK's uh, health data to to enable discoveries and to improve people's lives. And we were able to do that through essentially sort of standardization mapping, uh, being able to bring together the sort of the, the data from the four nations in order to to, to produce these um, produce these very important sort of findings. Um, and throughout, um, you know, the, the the last sort of few years, we've been at the foremost of, of of the sort of the advice and the scientific support, as well as the actual academic leadership um, in in a number of of sort of areas. Um, and and I'll come on to some of that detail. Uh, next slide, please. So, what about it? Standards and quality. Now, I get excited by this. I know not everybody does, but I'm probably preaching to the choir here. Um, and um, around sort of the continuum um, of, um, of of data standards from essentially sort of our metadata sort of layer all the way sort of through our um, our, our, our our structures um, up to the um, the, the maturity sort of gradient where we have sort of deeper deep sort of phenotypical sort of analysis and and, and improvement and and that all fits in within the the sort of the, the fair principles of findable accessible um and uh, interoperable and and reusable and during our first sort of five years we probably focused a lot around sort of findable and accessible but now we're very much into the interoperability and reusability of it next slide um, one of those things that we developed as a data utility framework, um, and uh, I chaired the uh, the data quality uh, group that actually worked on this. Um, and this was essentially saying, right, we started off sort of looking at how, how do we define sort of data quality through its classical sort of dimensions, but realized through sort of broad consultations of patients, publics, researchers, uh, industry colleagues, um, and, 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 and healthcare uh, professionals, that actually what was more important was the utility, the usefulness of the data. Um, and so uh, through a user-centered approach, we developed this, we published it in the BMJ, and actually this has been used as the baseline uh, for uh, a, a recently um, started uh, EU Horizon uh, program that I'm a co-lead for, um, which is developing the um, a data quality and utility label for EU legislation, which will be part of Article 56. Um, and that's a collaboration of 15 countries. Fortuitously, the UK is now allowed to to sort of play um, post Brexit. Uh, don't like to dwell on that. Um, so that's a delight to be part of that. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that, um, that that project is happening. And over the next three years, we'll be, we'll de be developing uh, more. Um, and I'll be able to share that with you. Next slide, please. So the title of the, of, of the presentation, and it's taken me 10 minutes to get to it, but don't worry, I know we've only got another 10 minutes, is, is very much sort of around sort of the impact of, of, of COVID on cancer patients. So one of the innovation hubs of which there are 10 for HDI UK is DataCan, um, which is around um, um, improving uh, access to existing data for cancer, the quality of the data, the UK coverage, and new data sets at scale too. And, and you can see with a patient at the center, the heart of everything that we do, actually utilizing the, the, the multimodality of our data um, is, is, is very important and working with colleagues across um, Genomics England and imaging data through the uh, National uh, Pathology Imaging um, Partnership, um, and uh, but also sort of across uh, primary, secondary care community um, and across the whole sort of spectrum, um, we we aim to, to 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 improve that and and DataCan is now hosted by the Leeds Teaching Hospital Trust, um, uh, where where I'm based um, in, in in Leeds, um, and 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 actually we're we're moving from strength to strength. Next slide, please. So one of the things that you know we we recognised that as as the pandemic sort of hit was this this enormous sort of drop off uh, in terms of of 
of cancer referrals, two week wait cancer referrals as we went into the first lockdown. Um, and also the, the, the health of the system around sort of attendances for chemotherapy and radiotherapy sort of treatments. Um, and, and, and we realized that actually we needed to do something quite serious uh, about this. Um, so we now have access to the uh, the national secure data environment, as you can see, 12 billion rows of data and more than 30 million patients in England. But we didn't have that at the start. Um, so what we needed to do was corral uh, the resources that we had um, and actually sort of work out was the best way of actually defining what the impact was going to be in a, a meaningful evidence based way um, so that actually we could get the attention of um, not only the, the, the four governments, and uh, the, the chief medical officers in those the, those areas, but also the you know the likes of of, of our colleagues on on Sage who are making those those daily weekly sort of decisions, and we we had places on there. Next slide, please. So the real time sort of analysis, um, we essentially sort of looked at uh, data directly from hospital trusts because we realised that that actually our registration sort of our registry data was just too out of date and it was just you know of good quality and and fit for for the purpose in which it was designed but it just wasn't going to meet the um meet the needs of of, of that real time sort of data and as i said you know we were seeing a 70% drop in two week wait um referral times and uh, a 40% drop in, in in chemotherapy attendances and we the first we had the first data that drew attention to the government um, of, of the disastrous effect of COVID-19 on cancer services and cancer patients. Next slide. There was more than just sort of, you know, those those two indicators. It was felt across the whole of the pathway um, as far as presentational delay, diagnostic delay and significant impact on, on treatment. So, you know, with people not coming forward and, and actually being referred um, for a, a definitive diagnosis of cancer means that inevitably that you get sort of stage shift so so people will will then present with with much later stage um uh date uh um disease and 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 therefore the chances of a um you know of a positive prognosis is is is, is much worse um and there was also a significant disruption of cancer research uh particularly in clinical trials discovery network and translational data research and you can see that the references there um, and and the figures that um, that that we were able to sort of demonstrate. Next slide, please. Um, this is the area where we 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 really delved into the detail of it, and this is where we were using this, the 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 power of of SNOMED CT to its absolute sort of maximum. So not only did we use our real time data that we collected across our own network, we essentially sort of used um, the caliber data set, which is a linked primary and secondary care data set um, that uses um, primary care data from CPRD um, that is recorded um, either in read or now uh, SNOMED um, and, 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 and actually using that um, particularly to look at all of the comorbidities of nearly 4 million citizens through that linked data set and then linking it with our hospital episode statistics, with our um, the COVID pandemic um, uh, data. And we use that um, real-time data to inform the model. Um, and at the time, we predicted excess deaths in England of somewhere between uh, seven and, and, and 18,000 excess deaths, which is a massive, so that's on top of what we would normally sort of see. And that was a real sort of alarm bells. Um, but we would not have been able to do that. And, and also being able to see, you know, the, the, the level of impact for people with underlying con uh, conditions, um, whether that's cardiovascular disease, whether that was diabetes, whether that was other long-term conditions, those comorbidity data, we had to have that rich gran granularity that you can get from a clinical terminology such as SNOMED. So this was absolutely, you know, fantastic and invaluable uh, for for this predictive model and and it it really started to 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 resonate um and to get the message through next slide 
Uh, once again, you know, we looked at the additional risk of excess deaths with at least one uh, underlying condition, as I've mentioned, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, COPD. And so that, and in terms of, of combined with um, with the COVID data, um, uh, was 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 really sort of informative and and, and powerful. Um, so it was the the first real sort of evidence that sort of came through. Well, obviously, we've built on that subsequently over the last sort of few years, and we're doing our retrospective analysis as well. Next slide. Um, and following months of of, of disruption, uh, we were able to 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 evaluate the stage shift and detection of cancer. And, and for certain cancers, uh, and colorectal in particular, the, the pandemic set us back nearly a decade in terms of we'd been really improving in terms of sort of, uh, of early diagnosis and uh, significantly sort of affecting um, uh, survival, in particular lung cancer, where the the, the characteristics um, are the uh, the presenting condition chief complaint is you know very similar to, to to covid and for years we've been telling people if you've got a cough for more than three weeks go to your gp and get tested and then we were saying oh if you've got a cough don't come anywhere near us so you know it, it the, there was a real sort of stage shift next slide please <laughs> So in terms of influence and impact, I've mentioned some of the things, you know, I don't want to blow on trumpet too much, but actually it really sort of hit the headlines in terms of the, um, you know, the the, the press, um, in terms of sort of, you know, lead stories. But, but what we really wanted to do was make sure that it was high up on the um on on the priority for the the CMOs of each of the, the four nations um and and also for it to be put into the recovery plan. And Simon Stevens was the chief exec at NHS England at the time and essentially on the back of the work that that we'd done uh for through HDI UK, essentially cancer recovery plans were in this the stage three recovery um that were, were the top priority. So you know in terms of actually the amount of, of deaths that had actually happened, then we reckon that's about half of what we predicted. We're still doing some of those analytics, but the excess deaths for uh, cancer um were for the first year were about three and a half thousand as opposed to seven, which is a, a huge achievement. So if you want to look at data saving lives, the, then that's it. And we won the Royal College of Physicians um, <coughs> Research Award uh, for original research. Next slide, please. <coughs> so we are continuing to do that. Um, these are the last couple of slides for the last sort of minute. Um, this is what we're doing. I've got teams of uh, of, of analysts and data scientists working at the University of Leeds and 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 uh, and and also we're collaborating with 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 Sheffield and colleagues in Cambridge and um to use the the, the national data to actually um uh, enumerate uh, these sort of findings and we're continuing to do that and we've just extended our data sharing agreement with NHS England yesterday uh, so that's good news um and the final slide um thanks very much um this is a case study that myself and my colleagues uh, Professor Jeff Hall, who is Chief Clinical Information Officer at Leeds Teaching Hospitals. He's a medical oncologist um, and also the Chief um, <clears throat> Clinical Data Officer for HDI UK. We essentially wrote up this case study with, with colleagues at, um, at NHS England. It's available um, online. I've put the link in there that actually just gives you a bit more detail about what I've told you today. Um, so that's, that's it. Um, that's essentially sort of what I wanted to to, to tell you about today. Um, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Monica. That this is very exciting uh, news to see and to see this presentation at all. I mean, this is very important. Um, from I, I just say from, from Norway side, there has been a lot of uh, thoughts about the clinical use of SNOMED and this is exactly the very good example that you're coming with to, to see how that can be done. So I, I just want to congratulate. And then, so that was just a comment for me. I would like to see if there's anybody else who wants to say something or have a question maybe here, anything on the line? Yeah, I haven't seen anything. so. So I just want to thank you again, Monica. It was a very good presentation.
<laughs> that's lovely. And if anybody thinks about any questions, sort of afterwards, you've got my my, my contact details there, or you can you can go through um, colleagues at, um, at at Snowmed International, and um, always willing to 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 follow these things up and to collaborate. And 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 um, it, this is a great opportunity. So thank you very much indeed.